Hola, buenas tardes. Vamos con la tercera sesión del día de hoy en SG Virtual. A continuación tenemos a Radamantis Torres, quien nos va a platicar sobre Blameless Culture During Incidents and RCAs. Actually, this session will be in English. Esta sesión va a ser en inglés. Eh, y las preguntas las pueden hacer en español. You may ask your questions in Spanish or English, whatever you prefer. And we will answer the questions in the language in which you make them. Eh, pueden hacer sus preguntas en español y las contestaremos en español, pero la plática va a ser en inglés para que también eh, la grabación quede en inglés. Ok, so without further ado, let me tell you that Radamantis Torres, uh, he's a lead incident commander at Salesforce, and hopefully he can tell us a bit more about what that means. Uh, Radamantis is a former full stack software engineering, mobile developer, and sysadmin. He started working on operations a few years back. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Hopefully everyone can hear me and everyone can see my, my face. Oh. What's wrong? This. Give us one second, please. Tenemos unos problemas técnicos. Estábamos oyendo. Yo creo que cuando activaste mi micrófono se perdió el de Rada, pero ahí ya debería de estar, Uriel. Es algo que tú haces de tu lado. Puedes, ¿puedes actualizar tu, tu pantalla, Rada Mantis. Puedes darle un refresh a tu, a tu browser, a tu navegador. Ya, ok, ya te tenemos. Yes, we can. Perfect. Ok, well, thank you, Pedro. And uh, this was uh, just a hiccup. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Radamantis Torres, and I'm going to talk about the blameless culture during incidents and RCAs. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to explain a little bit what is the lead, well, the incident commander role. Um, as Pedro mentioned, well, I'm former software engineer, former sysadmin, former mobile developer. I've been managing global operation teams for high availability platforms. I've been managed uh, incidents on high availability, uh, availability environments for a while already, for more than five years probably. And uh, before going into a little bit more into that, uh, into the subject today, uh, what is an incident commander? Well, uh, Whenever, if you're working on an engineering organization, whenever you have a, a, an incident, um, a, an outage, something like that, uh, you, for sure you have a structure that uh, people who join um, a, a session, a, a bridge, on which they're gonna start discussing what they need to do to recover. The incident commander, uh, you might know it for, uh, by another names like uh, escalation manager or incident manager or something like that. It's basically the person who is going to be leading the, the incident. It's the person that is going to be making the decisions of what to do, what not to do, what needs to be done, what are the best decisions in, for the customers and for the business. Um, so engineers are going to follow the, the incident commander on, on, on the direction. So it's a very technical uh, role on which you need to understand. Of course, you need to understand the stack and uh, the, um, what is the company that you're working for, uh, what they do, how they do, what is uh, underneath uh, the databases, the, uh, all the different uh, uh, infrastructure and everything, because you need to, sometimes you need to make tough decisions. Uh, so that's my role. Uh, I'm leading the incident, co the incident commanders in team and Mules, and MuleSoft, which is part of Salesforce. And yeah, so, uh, Let's go into business. What is an incident? I've been talking a little bit about an incident, an outage, a problem. Uh, well, it's an anomaly. It's something uh, that is broken and was not planned. Uh, it was something that uh, it's impacting your customers and uh, it's something that you need to uh, 
quickly respond to because uh, you have customers that are being impacted by, by this. Um, you need to look at this uh, as an emergency, right? Um, and most of the times you have different uh, levels of severity, we call them. Uh, as M0 is a catastrophic incident on which let's say the entire, an entire product is down and customers cannot uh, do anything with, that, uh, with the product. Uh, severity one, it's uh, probably you have a degradation of the service, uh, a major uh, a functionality of, uh, of, uh, of your platform or of your service, it's down. Um, so you need to, to uh, recover as soon as possible. And uh, then you have other incidents on which uh, there is no customer impact. But if you don't react, if you don't do something, that might cause uh, uh, a customer facing a problem. Uh, for example, like if you have a, a database that is uh, uh, running slow, probably at the beginning, the customers are not going to notice anything. But you need to capture that. You need to be able to identify those problems uh, because, it, let's say, like in two, three, four hours, that is going to start impacting your customers. So that is an incident as well. It's not a, a, a customer facing incident, but you need to create the bridge. You need to join the bridge. You need to uh, get your resources, your people, your engineering teams, and all the, uh, depends on your structure and how you're dealing with incidents. You need to uh, get, uh, gather everyone on the, on the bridge and start uh, working uh, for a solution. So let's move a little bit about uh, what is blameless. And I love this uh, monkey. Uh, because it's basically it's blaming someone and uh, it's angry and it's uh, uh, something that we don't want to do is uh, uh, finger pointing. Um, blameless is uh, during an incident or during an RCA or during a meeting, it's someone that is, it was your fault because you did this wrong or uh, it was your fault because uh, it, something happened because you thought this was good, but it was not good. Um, and then that it's something that it's completely wrong. Um, I think Blame started like uh, 2012, uh, a while ago. And uh, uh, different companies been embracing and uh, adopting this uh, culture because you cannot, uh, um, you need to encourage your, your engineers to do their best. And yes, we are humans and we made mistakes. Um, so, uh, companies like Facebook, uh, Google, um, uh, of course, Salesforce, we are following this uh, blameless uh, culture, right? Um, a little bit more about this. It's, this is our own failure. It's a culture around failure. Uh, the failure is going to happen. You cannot avoid that. Always, the, the, it's always going to be a failure, even either if it's a human error or if it's something with the with infrastructure or with the system, at the end, the system, they're going to fail. And uh, you cannot prevent that. You, you, can, you cannot know some, most of the times you don't know when it's going to happen. But what you can do is to uh, react uh, the best way possible uh, to, those, to those events. So as I was saying, it is human to fail. It is normal. But how you can refocus on finding solutions and trying to avoid these repetitive incidents. Maybe you have an incident that um, it's happening every, every other week, every other Friday. Uh, after three times, probably uh, less than that too, you're going to notice that, hey, we have a pattern here. Um, instead of uh, trying to uh, blame people you know, for what happens, let's change that and try to think about, okay, so we need to understand what happened and we need to find a better, a better way to fix that, right? Um, so you need to find a solution to the failures. You need to understand how to uh, make sure you are covering and you are creating remediation actions. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit uh, about this uh, in, in a minute um, to make sure that you're not going to have the same problem again, again, and again, right? Um, so this is something that can happen, no? It's, uh, well, you need a balance between safety and accountability because, of course, if someone is, uh, is doing something wrong again and again and again, of course you need accountability. But 
the people need to feel safe on what they do. So you don't need to punish uh, during the years, uh, and you don't, you don't need to do punishment as a remediation. So, and this is uh, just, uh, as you can see, I like monkeys. Uh, this is just a couple of monkeys fighting and everything. And this is sometimes is normal, but this, we need to avoid this. Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, fighting like in person. I'm talking about when you're uh, in the outage bridge and you are talking and everything, then uh, every, everyone is like, hey, no, it's not my fault because I did this. And then it's, it's this person's fault because that person was doing, and that person is like, no, 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 it's not my fault because et cetera, et cetera. So we need to avoid that. At, always, always you need to avoid it. If someone during the incident is, is, is going into, into this, you need to move away from that. Uh -huh. and, uh, and also during, during an RCA, uh, root cause analysis. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about uh, root cause analysis in, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, so you need to understand what is the weakness and how to make teams stronger, right? And that is kind of uh, uh, everything behind this. Okay, so if this engineer is, 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 uh, is doing something wrong, you need to understand why, what was the, the thinking behind that? And you need, to, you need to socialize then what is the best way to do it. So you always want to avoid this, this kind of uh, conflict. So what is happening during an incident? Um, everything is how you approach the problems, right? Instead of uh, whenever you join the bridge, uh, well, you need, to, uh, you need to understand what, what the problem is, what is the impact, uh, uh, and then you need to make sure that you have the, all the people you need on the bridge. Um, if you have everyone on, on, on the bridge, then you need to tell, okay, uh, the investigation. Sometimes you don't know what's going on. So uh, as, uh, as an incident commander, in my case, my role is to, do, to say, okay, guys, we don't know what's going on. We understand that this is an impact. Now we need to, uh, we need to investigate. So you put up the different teams, probably you have an infrastructure team, a database team, you have the application team, and then you, you want them to work together, right? So my role, and your role, if, you're a, if you will have a similar role as mine, is to make sure that everyone is uh, focused on that. You need to uh, focus on how to fix a problem, uh -huh. and not on who made a mistake. There is no room for a, a investigation on what was the problem and who made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera, during an, during an outage. What you want to do is to recover as fast as possible because your customers are being impacted. And if you're in one of those incidents where you do not have customers, si me estén escuchando hola hola habla Pedro Galván eh, perdimos a Radamantis a ver allá lo perdimos un momento no sé si tuvo un problema su máquina o algo ya se está reconectando so we had a small uh, technical problem with the speaker uh, Apparently, he's, uh, he logged out. I don't know if his computer crashed. So give us a second. We are contacting him. Denos un momento, por favor. Estamos contactando al conferencista para ver qué sucedió. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, a small blip. You know, sometimes it's challenging. Um, so yeah, I was I was saying I was I was explaining like. If you have people on the bridge that start with this, um, with this uh, blaming uh, thing going on, 
uh, you have the power as incident commander, as uh, escalation manager, uh, incident manager, whatever is the role, you have the power to stop that person and say, hey, um, we can talk about that later. Uh, we need to focus on resolution. Um, so you need to always move away from, uh, from, from, from punishment, right? You, you want to make sure that people is working together to find uh, a resolution of the problem. You don't want uh, people to, uh, to um, just lose the focus and, and, and start working on, on something that is not worth it. Um, so, and, and remember, the faster that you can recover, uh, the better customer experience, because it's not the same that you have all the people in, in the room with you in the bridge and you're working and then someone start going down into something else and um, but, and you're, you're losing the, the these minutes that you can focus on, 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 on recover. And you always need to think about uh, customer experience. What are your customers uh, looking for? Yeah, of course, it's, uh, there are some uh, challenges and there are some cases on which you will not be able to recover as fast as, as you can or as you want because, of course, it's like a, a Morphe's law that uh, whatever, whatever can go wrong, it will go wrong during an incident. Um, so for, for that instance, also, it's a, a kind of a best practice to do some dry runs. So when, whenever you're not on an incident, of course, you can just uh, run some um, um, just um, a kind of an experiment on paging people, making sure that they're joining the room, and take take the time uh, how 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 long it takes for them to to join the room. Um, don't be rude. Don't do it in the middle of the night because that is uh, super uh, stressing. Sometimes, of course, when you are on call, and if you guys are on call, sometimes you know that uh, something that happened in the middle of, of the night is super stressing. So if you're gonna run a, a, an experiment or something like that, do it in the middle of the day, um, and, and don't go as far as uh, I want to see how everyone reacts in the middle of the night because you know, that, that is not good to do. Um, but going back it during, uh, during an incident, you want to recover faster. You want to uh, you want to put the customer on, on in the middle and make sure that the customer experience is the best that you can that you can provide, even during an incident. How I can provide customer experience during an incident? I mean, probably my my best functionality is down. What what can I do? Well, it's about communication. Um, most companies, they do have a communication channel to the customers where they announce uh, new releases, maintenance windows, something like that. And we use those channels to also uh, um, provide guidance and notify our customers whenever we have a problem. So if you have a problem, you want to make sure, that's why I was saying, um, you need to understand the, the customer impact. You need to put the customer in the middle, understand what, what the impact is, and then push something out. So you, your customer before, hopefully, and uh, the, the goal is to, to notify them before they realize that there's something wrong with your service or platform. So that is, that is, a, that is key. And then if you uh, have a long running incident, then please provide uh, continuous updates because they, they just, uh, if they don't get an update, they start getting nervous on what's happening. Uh, I, need to, I don't know, maybe this, this is a, a feature that they're using that is super important for their business. Uh, they're just waiting for you to, to come back and then they can continue operating. So you, you need to, to, to work on that. The other thing that happened during the incident is uh, people will start like, hey, I think I found the root cause. I've been investigating this and that. Do not try to find the root cause during the incident. If by accident you, you find the root cause, perfect. If the root cause is clear, perfect. Take a note and leave it for later. That conversation is, doesn't need to happen during the incident because during the incident, you need to focus on recover. That's why we have, uh, as, as soon as the incident is closed, then start the, the root cause analysis uh, process, whatever process you have in, in, in your companies. But you don't want to go this, uh, down this uh, during an incident. It's not good. Okay? So, uh, well, if you have a solid structure around incidents, 
it's going to be easy to implement blameless culture. And what I mean with the solid structure, that uh, you have people, engineers from different teams uh, on call, and you're going to talk to them about this, uh, this uh, blameless culture, like, hey, uh, we need to make sure that we are we we focus on on resolution. Hey, we want to make sure that uh, we don't uh, do the the uh, hey you you are doing this wrong or something like that. So uh, you need to talk to to the people who usually is with you in the uh, on an incident, right? Um, at the same time, of course, you need you need to have the buy from leadership. You cannot implement something. Just like that, you need to talk with uh, your manager, your uh, the leadership of the company, because whenever you are on an incident, and the incident commander usually is the person who makes the decisions, and that's the person who is going to be uh, providing information to the to the leadership, right? So you need to talk to the leadership team, to managers, and directors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and say, hey, um, we want to change the culture of how we are running. Uh, our incidents and our RCAs because uh, it's going to be healthier for our engineers. It's going to be better for our company. Um, it's, it's something that it's going to have a, a positive outcome. And there is a lot of uh, literature out there about this, how a blameless culture is improving um, the, the, the culture inside of the company, uh, even though the, the attrition, it's... Uh, it's going down because uh, the, the people feel more confident, they feel good, uh, they, they feel empowered to, to work uh, with you and uh, doing incidents, right? So you don't want to just, after this talk, say, hey, I'm going to start doing blameless. I'm going to uh, do this and not talk with anyone. You want to start, and this is something that is uh, the change. If you don't have, if you're, not, if you're not following this or you're kind of in the middle, um, it's going to take some time because there's always someone that is going to be like that. The, the, if, if you already noticed during an incident, you have different actors on the on the bridge, right? You have different people on the phone call with you, and some of them they're like super like, uh, "Hey, this is wrong, and why are you doing this?" And th that is the, the the people that it's a, li it's a little bit difficult to change, but you need to work with them, and there are ten, uh, different techniques for that. Um, you want to make sure that everyone is uh, working for a common goal. Uh -huh. So it's not easy. Um, at the end, you need to remain calm. You should be a role model of blameless culture. And how is that? Well, you are on the bridge. If you're an Asian commander, if you're an engineer, if you are a um, um, product owner, an engineering manager, whatever, it's on you. You need to start being a role model for everybody else and remain calm, stay focused, and work with everyone in harmony because that is what you want to do. There, and remember, there is no place for, um, for uh, blaming people during, during a call. And sometimes this is very difficult because you are under pressure. To, uh, you're in a major outage. You have, um, um, you have people calling you from... I don't know, your director or sometimes the CEO or the CTO calling, hey, what's going on? What's going to happen? Why are we having this problem, et cetera, et cetera. So that is it's a very, very stressful uh, environment. So to remain, remain calm during an incident is not an easy task, but um, it's something that you need to learn, uh, and you, you need to, learn to do. Uh, what we do when leadership is joining, of course, we already have a lot of conversations with leadership. They know that the incident commander is the one that is leading the incident. They made the decisions and everything. If I need some um, uh, advice, because there are some tough decisions that you need to make and involving some business decisions, stuff like that, I'm going to consult with, um, with a VP, with a director, or something like that, because I, I need consultants. I, I, need, I need to understand the different impact and what is better. Sometimes you, you have three options, and the three of those, uh, the three of them are not the best. But you need to do something. So you need to quickly engage these um, leadership people and say, "Hey, this is a situation. We have a scenario A, B, and C. You need to pick one, and this is the consequence of A, B, and C, and this is what is going to happen on A, B, and C, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. So 
you need to be able to go with your, with your people and, and your leadership and say, hey, this, this is happening and we need to do it. We need to record because it is not, if not, customer impact or uh, not a good uh, customer experience. So that is a mechanism that you need to, a channel, a communication channel that you need to build. Um, on the other hand, as incident commander, I have the, the power to ask people to leave the room for different reasons. Um, and the room I'm talking about the incident uh, breach. If someone is um, not doing anything during the breach because probably uh, that person is in a, in a team that you just realize that you don't need that team anymore, you can dismiss that person and say, hey, uh, engineer A, you, you're not doing anything right now. Uh, there's no need uh, for you to be in the, on, the, on the room because there's a, a different problem. It's not involved with uh, whatever uh, uh, part of the product that you uh, are responsible for. So you can drop. You can drop the bridge. And if we need you, we're going we're gonna to paste you again. And this is super important because you need to uh, keep the team focused and uh, um, make sure that you don't have external noise. And at the same time, if there's no need for someone to be there, don't keep that person in the room with you because maybe you're in the middle of the night and you, that person needs to go back to sleep because tomorrow they have a meeting, whatever. So you need to, uh, as an incident commander and incident manager, um, and installation manager, you need to be very conscious about the time of the others. If you don't need someone in the room, you can dismiss that person. At the same time, if you, can, you have a very, very noisy person on the call, like that person is uh, blaming others, is not uh, contributing in a positive way to the, to the incident, you can always contact leadership and say, hey, um, I need someone to take over because this person is, the attitude of this person is, is not the best. And uh, so and we need to, we need to uh, move to another engineer that can help us. And maybe it's not that, uh, a problem is not a, uh, uh, that person's problem. You know, incidents are stress, very, very stressful. Um, that person probably had a bad day. It's, uh, it, I just went to bed and he's super tired and everything. That person needs to take some rest and that person shouldn't be on an incident, right? Because also like if you have uh, people on the incident that is tired, they're gonna make some mistakes. Okay, what is an RCA? Let's move, uh, let's move on. Um, root cause analysis. This is what you need to understand. What happened? How happened? What we need to do to avoid this in the future? Um, so it's always good to have a document on, on which you can, during an incident, you can put information there, like uh, a timeline. At this time, this, uh, this engineering team, they joined the bridge and they start working in this. Uh, at this time, we recovered the database. At this time, we just uh, redeployed the application. Stuff like that. You need to uh, try to document uh, as much as more as possible during an incident because that information is gonna is gonna be key information when you are on the on the RCA call. And what we usually do is okay. So um, incident is over. Everyone go go to take some air. Uh, take a walk, go back to, to, to bed or whatever you, you were doing, just uh, do that. We're going to schedule a meeting on which uh, we're going to talk about what happened here. Then just, just schedule that meeting the next day or, or, or uh, the day after that day. And you gather all the people, the, the people that was on the incident with you, and then you start analyzing the information. So it's good to have a good structure, the summary, description of what happened, uh, what we did, what was the customer impact? Uh, what different pieces uh, we touched? Um, stuff like that. Then contributing factors. Well, uh, we have a uh, traffic spike, and then uh, the, because of the traffic spike, uh, we had uh, well, why the traffic spike uh, happened? Well, uh, probably a customer was doing a, a load test. The customer was just uh, testing a new functionality or they just have a bad, uh, bad code and they're just, uh, just spamming one API or whatever, right? Uh, you need to understand those things, but that is a contributing factor. You need to understand what is the root cause. Do you need to put some mechanism to throttle uh, people using your, your API? Do you need to put a sh uh, short circuit 
Do you need to do something to avoid like multiple connections? Uh, I don't know if you connection pool of the database is 50 connections. Maybe you want to do something to make sure that you're recycling those connections and then you're not, uh, if you have a high spike, you're not uh, consuming more than 50 so you cannot connect to the database. Stuff like that, right? So you need to understand exactly what happened. You need to understand the root cause. And there are different um, techniques to, uh, to, to, to uh, work on RCAs. Uh, there's one that is the five whys, on which you just continue asking why, 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 until you have like a, uh, an answer that uh, why this happened? Well, this is the root cause, right? Uh, fishbone graphics and a lot of uh, other things. Um, so while writing an, S, an RCA, and this is part of the blameless culture, you don't want to write a name. Like the engineer A was doing some uh, deployments and because of the engineer A did this wrong, we had this incident. You need to, to change that and you need to use team names. The engineering team A was uh, scheduled to do a deployment. The, Something went wrong, the deployment, causing blah, 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 blah. So the blameless culture is from the incident when you are, you are on the bridge live with all the engineers and, and everything until the end of the process when you're writing and providing RCA to uh, even your customers or your uh, leadership. So you need to mind your words. You need to pick the correct ones as a consequence of a mistake in the deployment, a miscalculated action, stuff like that. Because you don't want to, uh, if you, it's, it's everything about uh, the same thing. If you write a name in the RCA, then you don't want uh, others to look at that person, hey, because of this guy, we had an incident, right? And maybe people that is writing, sorry, reading this uh, RCA in the future, like, uh, Sometimes it happens like, hey, we have a similar incident in the past. We want to go back and see what happened. So they open the, the, the RCA from six months ago, and they start reading, and they see names on there. Oh, this guy, he was a problem, et cetera, et cetera. And then they're going to start like looking at that guy in a, in a, in a bad way. you know. And uh, probably the same as I was telling you guys. We are humans. We made mistakes. That is something that we cannot avoid. But of course, in the... the, the the more um, controls that you can put in place to avoid mistakes, the better. But there's always room for mistakes because we are humans. So you don't want people to start like uh, outside, even outside of the incident, people that were not there, start looking at people like, hey, this guy was the one that caused that big incident uh, six months ago or something like that. So you, you want to completely avoid that. Right? Um, so during the RCA, again, a lot of discussions happen during the RCA. Why this happened? Let's try to understand this. And they can start, like the engineers on the RCA meeting with you, they can start like, hey, it's uh, this guy, they, he did this wrong or she did this wrong because uh, she or he doesn't know that you cannot uh, add some indexes in the Postgres database, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, so you need to stop like, okay, wait. Uh, let's understand what happened here. Um, and then the engineers, they should be able to describe the actions that they made. On, they, they should be able to, to describe the effects, what they observed, why, what, if they, what, what was their way of thinking, why they did that action, what expectation, expectations they had, what assumptions they had made, and understand the timeline of, of events. Because sometimes you can, you can hit, hit a corner case and uh, probably you're doing everything by the book, everything correct, but you hit a corner case and boom, everything just go, goes down. Um, so the, the engineers with you, they should be able to feel comfortable working in, in, on what they do without, in, without fear or hesitation. This is, some, this is, again, a, this is about not punishing someone for something that has happened in a wrong way. So the, 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 your engineers, they need to feel encouraged to, to experiment, to do more stuff and everything. Of course, 
uh, there's a lot of common sense, there's a lot of training, and your seniors, they need to coach your juniors, and you want to make sure that everything is uh, it's the best way as possible. But when something go wrong happens, do not punish your engineers, because they just going to feel uh, just super bad, and that the, the, the morale goes down, and that is bad for an engineer organization. You don't want the morale that you know, goes just down. Um, so you need to identify the mistakes and ask how we can prevent this in the future. It's not like, why you did this? No, no, no. Forget about it. Forget that, like, what were you thinking? Why you did this? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this was a mistake. How we can prevent this to happen in the future? What we can do to make sure that uh, we don't want to hit this problem again? And sometimes it's about documentation, your playbooks, um, and your manuals, uh, training, a lot of things, right, uh, that uh, can fix this. And at the same time, socializing. You, you want to make sure that whenever you have a big incident or a decent size incident on which you're impacting uh, uh, some sensitive areas of your company, you want to make sure that everyone has visibility into the RCAs because your team A that is working in the in one in one uh, part of the product, probably they don't have a lot of communication with the, with the team B, and probably they using the same uh, well not the same but they are using Postgres or MySQL or Oracle or whatever, and they have like a similar behavior on how they're using the database, and this guy they, in the the team A they hit a problem, and socializing the RCA can communicate information to the team B so they will not hit the same problem in the future. So that is also super important. And of course, when this team is going and reading the RCA, the RCA needs to be super clear. And again, without names, we don't want to point to people for what happened. We want to mention teams, right? So would you always want to focus on, on understanding the root cause? Don't go down the rabbit hole in an unnecessary conversation. Sometimes, not even uh, about uh, blaming others, but sometimes what you have is, uh, okay, so uh, I found this documentation and look, and uh, this is something we can implement in the future, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just spend like 15 uh, minutes talking about something that maybe is gonna help you in the future, but it's not fixing the, 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 the root cause, right? So you, as an incident commander, part of the role as well is, you want to keep uh, everyone focused on the on the on the uh, on the same thing. We want to um, create a document. That document needs to be very descriptive and very clear on what happened. So if I go back in the future, if I go back to read the same document after a year, or two years, or whatever, I should be able to understand what very very clearly what happened. Okay. Um, and then the remediation actions. Almost all the root cause analysis meetings, you need to, at the end, you need to uh, come out with, uh, with uh, remediation actions. What are, what are those? Probably you need to refactor a component for the database connections. Probably you want to add some uh, controls on, on one part of the code, whatever. Something you, you want to do, right? But you want to make sure that this is something that, is, that can be measured. Like, okay, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, optimize the database. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to look for slow queries. We're going to optimize those queries. Um, and the definition of done is going to be the system is going to be able to, uh, to the public database is going to be able to return faster, like by 20% the results. Um, it's, it's meaningful in, in the sense that, yes, this is going to contribute that uh, this incident is not, is not going to happen in the future and can be tracked. What is that? Okay, so to modify this, uh, we're going to create a DL ticket or a rally or whatever uh, system you use. And we're going to put some story points on there and we're going to put it on, this, on the next sprint. And we're going to make sure that it can be measured, it's meaningful and can be tracked. Something like, oh, we need to talk with uh, the team of blah, 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 because that team, they have some ideas. That is not a remediation action. A remediation action is a clear uh, action, a clear uh, um, a statement on what we need to do, can be measured, it's meaningful, and can be tracked. Okay? Um, 
another important thing it's uh, what is your uncle structure you want to make sure that you have a solid uncle structure and rotation if you are running a platform a service probably you have customers that are using your system in the other side of the world so they cannot if something happens in the middle of the night for you the people in the other side of the world they cannot wait for you to wake up and fix it right so um you want to make sure that you have a, a solid structure. You can you can do a follow the sun. And when a long running incident is happening, what is a long running incident? Probably an incident that is taking six, seven, eight hours to resolve, or even more. We uh, probably we're going to have one of them every year. Or I don't know. But you want to make sure that you're ready for that. So you want to make sure that you can hand off to others. As an incident commander, uh, I want to I want to make sure that the the other person, my backup, or the next person on call can join 30 minutes before the, the handoff, then I can pass the information. Okay, so we're working on this. We, we've been doing this. This is on, in progress. This is happening. We are expecting this, et cetera, et cetera. So the next incident commander is going to take over and say, okay, I'm ready. I have all the information. I can continue working with you guys. Make sure that everyone is okay. Sometimes what happens is that you have engineering teams on the call with you and they're super stressed. And uh, it's an eight hours incident, and they're like super tired. So you want to make sure that they, they're okay. And if they, they need a backup, so you need to call it out. Hey, engineer A, you've been in the call for eight hours already. You need to sleep. Uh, find, uh, or be, even before that, of course, but find um, a person that can take over uh, from you. You do the handoff to that other engineer, and you go to bed or you go out and take some, take a walk or whatever because uh, you cannot uh, the ideal is no more than four hours straight on, on, on an incident call right so after four hours you, you need to start checking on everyone how you doing um, how you feeling uh, who can take over if this is taking longer etc cetera, etc cetera. and you need to assess that uh, uh, all, all the time again because we made mistakes more often when we are tired and that is something that we don't want to do during an incident. So embrace blameless. It's a good culture uh, around incidents and RCA. It means good outcome from incidents. Because if you have a good culture in your, in your uh, engineering teams, then the engineers, even though that you are working on an incident, uh, they, they're going to react both in a positive way uh, with you. They're going to go with you and they're going to work with you and everything is going to be okay right so you need to work on that you need to avoid the uh, the, the the culture on which i don't know i don't want i don't want to do anything because probably something is going to happen to me and uh, i don't want to be blamed for this and it's better if i don't do anything no during an incident sometimes when you are running out of ideas, because sometimes that happens that, hey, we try this, this, and that, and we cannot find what's going on, we cannot recover. You need people to, to venture and say, hey, I have an idea. And they pitch the idea. And uh, you need to analyze that, because maybe that is a really great idea. And no one, no one, uh, nobody else was thinking about that. And that is uh, something that it, maybe it's going to be the, the, the resolution or it's going to help to discover other vectors that can help you to. To, uh, to resolve the problem. So embrace it. You want people to collaborate. You want people to make sure that they feel confident, they feel good. And uh, if they made a mistake, they're not going to be punished. But uh, they, of course, you, you, they, they, there is accountability, but you need to be able to do it in a healthy way, right? Uh, if, and this happens, uh, and I'm thankful, thankful for that because this happens in here in Microsoft. Sometimes people, they just jump in the incident. They, it's not their product, it's not their system, it's, they're not infra, but they, hey, guys, I'm here. Um, this is engineer C, and uh, I had a similar problem in the past, and this is my experience, and probably this information is going to help you. So even though if you, it's not your incident, but if you can help, why don't you jump and help? So you want, you want to encourage that kind of culture around it, right? Now, we, in, in the incident, we are all together. We are on the bridge trying to find the best and more viable solution. We want to recover as soon as possible because 
we want to go back to bed because we were working on something and we need to finish that because customer experience, because we're losing money, because the, the, best, uh, the better we, we resolve this problem, our customers are going to be happier. And at the end, happy customers, it's, uh, it means uh, your company is doing good, right? So, and again, you can see I like monkeys. Uh, so be like these monkeys. They're like together on the bridge. Yes, they're a little bit scared because sometimes you don't know what you're facing, but together you can find the best solution. And uh, together you can, uh, you can work on what is the best for uh, the company and, and your customers, right? Um, one other thing, it's about what are your metrics? Um, what are you tracking? What is a good metric for you? And this is just an example of, okay, so whenever I have an incident, we have an impact start and impact end. The time that it takes for me, for my company to detect the impact is a time to detect. This is, um, okay, so I have monitoring in place and everything but the monitors and uh, they took like 45 minutes to detect that we were having impact. Well, you want to improve that uh, because sometimes your customers are going to notify you before your monitoring. And you don't want that to happen. To happen. You want your monitors to, to notify you before your customers. Now, from detection to incident declare, what is that? Um, I'm an engineer, I receive a pager, uh, there's something wrong with the database, and I'm kind of analyzing, I don't know if this is an incident, um, et cetera, et cetera. If, and that time that it takes to say, oh yes, it's an incident, is it time to acknowledge? The shorter, the better, of course. And then you start the incident, whatever mechanisms you're using, uh, whatever uh, uh, you're using to gather WebEx, uh, Google Hangouts, Zoom, whatever you're using, the time to engage is when you have all the things on the bridge ready to work with you. You want that to be shorter as well, the, as short as possible. And because the time from the impact start to everyone on the bridge is just time that is, you're not doing anything. Right? It's time that, uh, okay, detection, acknowledge, engagement. Now, you have everyone on the bridge. You want to recover. That's the TTR. The TTR is when everyone is on the bridge till the end of the impact. Uh -huh. And uh, that is a number that you cannot control. Sometimes it's going to be better, sometimes it's not going to be better. There are a lot of factors, a lot of variables that you cannot uh, control over here. So this is the most difficult uh, metric to reduce. The detection, the acknowledge, and the engagement. Those are those are uh, uh, metrics that you can you can reduce. And then when the impact impact uh, ends, uh, well, uh, it uh, starts the, the RCA, right? Now, um, how is your uncle structure? Yes. We are almost, we have two, three minutes. So mm -hmm. just to let you know. Two slides. Almost done. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, how is your on-call structure? You need to follow the zone. You need to be able to hand off to other time zones. You need, you need to be able to look for trends on the incidents. Understand The understanding trends is very difficult sometimes. But if you have the same problem every month, every other Friday or something like that, you need to be able to detect that problem and fix it and uh, make sure your people is okay and they take breaks. So you wanna have a healthy on-call structure. And um, is your organization ready? Uh, what, ch what changes need to happen? Identify the low-hanging fruit. Sometimes there are some small actions that you can start doing to improve uh, 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 all this culture and, and, and your on-call. Uh, identify the pain points. What, is the, what are the pain points from your customers? Sorry, your engineers, your teams. Capitalize information and publish metrics. You want to make sure that everyone understands how many incidents we had, what was the resolution, and why we had those incidents. All this information is it's super, super important. And well, this is my last one. Thank you, everyone. My name is uh, Radamantis on LinkedIn. Um, hopefully, this is something that uh, you're going uh, to start using and you can take this to your companies. And 
If you have questions, this is the time to shoot for questions. Hello. Hi, Radamantis. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, we have a couple of, couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Uh, they're in Spanish, both. Well, they're in English, but they're, they're from Spanish-speaking people, so we can switch to Spanish for okay. the questions. Um, la primera pregunta que nos hace Natalia Lozano es sobre si hay algún, recomiendas algún libro o material de referencia para conocer más sobre Blameless Culture y RCA Management. Sí, este, y no sé por qué no lo preparé. Lo pongo más tarde en el canal, sí. Ok. Ahorita en el canal de Agile eh, nos, nos compartes algunos enlaces con materiales y libros. Sí. Eh, la siguiente pregunta que nos hace Jorge es si usan algún tipo de herramientas o aplicaciones para gestionar todo esto. Sí, este, principalmente, bueno, nuestras herramientas de monitoreo eh, New Relic, de New Relic se va a PayerDuty. Eh, PayerDuty es donde se mandan todos los, este, los incidentes a los diferentes equipos de ingeniería o, o al a la gente que está en call para iniciar un incidente. Luego, eh, si la gente tiene que iniciar un incidente, los ingenieros tienen que, o soporte tiene que iniciar un incidente de forma manual, tenemos un bot en Slack que automáticamente crea un nuevo incident channel, crea un Jira ticket sobre el incidente eh, y empieza a pedir duty para la diferentes, eh, los diferentes equipos que tienen que unirse. Este, y internamente usamos Quip, que es un, eh, un, una herramienta de, de, de colaboración, que es como un documento de texto en, en lo que nosotros vamos colaborando. Tenemos ya una estructura eh, definida, timeline, summary, root cause, y toda la información la vamos poniendo ahí. Este, y también toda la información la ponemos en Jira. Entonces, en Jira vamos haciendo el tracking de, de, de los incidentes, ligamos los eh, remediation actions, entonces, cuando ya todos los remediation actions están cerrados, ya sabemos en Jira, el incidente no está, el, el Jira incident nos está diciendo que ya está listo eh, ese, ese incidente. Entonces, hay muchas herramientas allá afuera. PageDuty tiene sus propias eh, sus propios, este, herramientas con APIs que puedes usar. Este, pero bueno, eh, eso es como lo usamos nosotros. Oye, eh, esta pregunta es mía. Eh, Pareciera, o sea, alguien que, que viera esto y cómo se hace RCA, que la gente debe estar toda en un war room físico, pero por lo que entiendo, no, ¿verdad? Todo es distribuido. De hecho, pues tú estás desde Querétaro. Sí, todo es distribuido. Yo ahorita estoy en Querétaro. Este, hay otra parte del equipo en San Francisco, hay otra parte del equipo en Buenos Aires, hay otra parte del equipo en Sydney, otra parte en Dublín. Entonces... Es totalmente distribuido. Ahorita, como todos estamos en casa, este, también es, eh, pues, cada quien se conecta desde su casa, ¿no? Entonces, no hay necesidad de un war room físico. Lo tenemos. Cuando estoy en, en San Francisco, estoy en un war room físico con, con gente, pero obviamente muchos están remotos, porque no, no nada más tenemos un, 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 este, un location, ¿no? Entonces, tienes, eh, creo que el, el, lo importante aquí es también eh, hacerlo virtual. ¿Por qué? Porque también tenemos incidentes a medianoche. Entonces, si te despierta un incidente a las 2 de la mañana, por supuesto, todos van a estar en su casa, menos los que están en, en Australia o en, o en Dublín, que ellos están en la oficina, pero todos los demás están, van a estar en su casa, ¿no? Entonces, se despiertan, abren su computadora y empiezan a trabajar. Entonces, sí tenemos mucho la cultura de hacer todo esto de manera virtual. Ok. Y, eh, ¿cómo, eh, o más bien, información, bitácoras de los RCAs Uh -huh. ¿Esa información llega a performance reviews de la gente? No. Eh, ¿Es bueno eso o no? No, o... no es bueno. <ríe> Otra vez, blameless. Es, eh, las cosas que pasan en el incidente, Perfecto. estás bajo mucho estrés, eh, estás cansado, tuviste un mal día. Eso no tiene por qué ser parte del de, de, de performance review. Este, por el otro lado, lo que sí ha pasado es, tenemos un incidente muy fuerte, eh, y la gente que está participando en el incidente, pues lo hace de la mejor manera posible. Entonces, pues eh, la gente es premiada, ¿no? Así de, eh, ¿por qué? Porque lo, eh, tomamos buenas decisiones, porque lo hicimos bien. Y todo esto viene de toda la cultura detrás de estar seguros de que toda la, la gente está, está este, eh, bien, o sea, de que se sienten 
eh, bien de trabajar contigo y se sienten con toda la, la, la confianza de, de decir, oigan, esta idea, esta idea, esta idea. Uh -huh. Perfecto. Bueno, pues eh, se acabaron, se acabó nuestro tiempo. Eh, ¿Vas a seguir un ratito en el canal de Agil? Eh, me imagino, sí. Nada más. sí, lo mantengo abierto y, este, y ahí les mando, les voy a mandar un poco de bibliografía en un, en un ratito. Y este, y sí, por supuesto que sí.